This will change civilization. My colleagues were not interested in this work because they didn't want to understand this. The pharmaceutical industry does not want us to teach how you can heal yourself. The universe is made out of energy. Energy is like waves in the water that is in fact actually energy moving through water. This is how energy waves interact. I drop two rocks at from the, the same size rocks from the same height at the same time and they hit the water. And the waves are, the ripples are in phase and they come toward each other. The question is what happens when the waves meet? When they're in phase is the wave is more powerful. It is called constructive interference. There is an opposite effect. This time I drop the two rocks from the same height but I drop one before the other. And the ripples come toward each other but they're out of phase. One wave is going up, one wave is going down. Two waves can interfere and cancel each other out. This is called destructive interference. You have all experienced this in your life. So let's say it's Saturday night and you have to go to a party and you're tired and you meet some people who are in wave harmony. The waves are in harmony with you and your energy and their energy in phase gives you more power and then you are walking around with on your feet, on your toes, very high, constructive interference. You are in a scary place and you feel the energy go. What is going on is there's energy in the field that conflicts with you and it cancels your energy. Destructive interference. All animals and all plants communicate with vibration. The gazelle doesn't have to go up to the lion and say, are you my friend? Because at the distance, the energy could be felt and the gazelle will not go there because of bad vibes. When we were young, we're taught to be sensitive to the vibrations. We would not find ourselves in bad relationships and bad places. But we are usually told not to go by our feelings but to listen to what people have to say. Language was designed to hide feelings. So the point is, all organisms communicate by vibrations and know if they're in a good place or a bad place by reading the vibrations. But we humans uh, have that ability but are not trained to use that ability. But I will show you in a little while how vibrations change the proteins of the body and the proteins give us our structure and our function so the vibrations can alter our health and our biology. This is a picture of a gold atom and while you can see it in the electron microscope, if I give you a camera to fly through the atom and take pictures from one side to the other side, when you come back and develop the pictures, there will be nothing on the pictures. Well. This is a picture of a tornado. And I, I say drive your car 150 kilometers per hour straight here. Will the car go through the tornado, yes or no? It would be like hitting a stone wall. The car will be smashed by hitting, hitting the tornado. And yet you can see the tornado, so you say it's physical. But if you take the dirt and the dust out, and you then drive across the field at 150 kilometers per hour right here, it would be like a clear day and then you would hit like a stone wall. And the reason is atoms are miniature tornadoes. All atoms create waves. Are you made out of atoms and molecules, yes or no? Because if you are, then you are giving off light and energy and you are absorbing light and energy. In the new physics, you are energy waves interacting with each other in the room right now. What's interesting is in medicine, we don't study energy. The reason is the drug companies sell chemicals, they don't sell energy. The medicine does not understand disease because it only focuses on the particles and on matter. So Newtonian physics said study only the body. 
And quantum physics says no. Quantum physics says matter and energy are connected. The new physics, we bring the mind, which is energy, back to the body. And the relevance is just from what Albert Einstein said. So the mind is the field and it gives shape to the body. So what you are believing and what you are thinking so changes like your body. Of... When we see people, like if I look at the audience or you see us, we see people as physical particles and machines. But that's an illusion because what we are are interacting waves. That's why one person can affect another person just by being in the field. Every cell in your body has a minus voltage on the inside and positive voltage on the outside. Every cell, every live cell is a battery. Every cell has about 1.4 volts, not too much. 50 trillion cells in the body times 1.4 volts is 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body right now. And with training and meditation, you can focus this energy called chi, and you can use that energy for healing. So what is wrong is our belief. In my research, 40 years ago, I started working with stem cells. People think that stem cells are something new. But I learned very many things from the stem cells. The secret of life I learned from stem cells. Right now, in every one of you, you have stem cells throughout your entire body. And these stem cells can replace any tissue or organ in your body. And you should be able to stay young for hundreds of years, as Greg will talk about. So you might ask, then why do we age? And the answer is because the mind controls the cells and the genes. And we collectively believe in aging. So I published this work in 1977, and it's uh, a fine structural analysis of normal and modulated cells in myogenic culture. It sounds like Latin, but it, it sounds like Latin. And so science is like the church, so you can't understand what I'm talking about. But what is the meaning? Is that this is the first scientific report that I made, how the environment, controls the fate of your cells. And I use the word modulated, meaning altered, because there was no other word. My colleagues were not interested in this work because they didn't want to understand this. And I write my book on the biology of how cells work. And in my chapter two, I lay out the scientific evidence to show you genes do not control biology. I also introduce you to the exciting discoveries of epigenetics, a new field of biology that is unraveling the mysteries of how the environment influences the behavior of cells without changing the genetic code. And I call chapter two, it's the environment stupid. It's a takeoff from uh, President Bill Clinton's campaign saying it's the economy stupid. And five months after uh, I write this, people are saying, what do I know? Well, I'm not at a university, so what do I know? And then one of the most prestigious journals in the world, Nature, five months after my, my book, an article call about stem cells are engaged in a constant crosstalk with their environment. Biologists are fast realizing. No, some of them not too fast. What do you think they call this article in Nature? It's the same story. Science is now saying what I've been saying for 30 years is coming around now. 95% of the people should have a healthy, happy existence. So if you change your thought and your mind, you can change the biology. And this the mind is the primary cause of illness on our planet today. We can create the world that we want, and what we have to do is become conscious. And then heaven will be on this planet right here.